How can I have confidence in my decisions as a parent when I know that others disapprove of my parenting? <laughs> Woo! Man, someone sent me that question and it immediately got my attention. Have you ever looked around at the parents that you see at the grocery store or in church or in your family and like some of them are doing great and you're so proud of them, like they're, they're managing their kids freak out super well and then others, you're, you're like not breathing, you're just cringing so much like, oh my goodness, please don't, don't do that. Yeah, those experiences remind us that, you know, even though most parents love their children, that not all of us parent well in every moment. And so behind the question that was asked is this real discussion of how, how do we filter the feedback that others have about our parenting? Uh, I'm not Jesus. So sometimes I'm going to be a good dad and sometimes I'm really going to mess it up. And sometimes my friends and my family members are going to see my bad parenting. Should I just like dismiss them? Like they don't know the best way to parent my kid or should I be humble and take their feedback? To be totally candid with you, uh, I'm still trying to to wrestle in my own mind as a middle-aged man about the next generation of parents. Um, as a pastor of a church, I, I see a lot of people and their parenting styles. As I'm in the community, I, I just see a lot of good parenting and a lot of bad parenting. And I've just noticed something that other parents my age have noticed too. And it's a tough situation because, you know, my generation and previous generations of parents got things wrong a lot. If I could stereotype, th there was a lot of previous parenting that was really like tough, strict. Children are meant to be seen and not heard. I'll give you something to cry about. It was like so, dr I don't care how you feel. You know, like it, it kind of dismissed the emotions and love of a child to do the right behavior in the moment. And I think a lot of modern parents have seen that and said, I, I don't want to do that to my kid. If I'm ever a mom or a dad, like I'm not going to, I'm going to love my kid and listen to my kid way more than that. But maybe uh, I think what has happened is the pendulum has swung to an unhealthy extreme where we care so much about our kids, their feelings, their emotions, their mental health, that we forget about the truth and the behavior and right and wrong. We, we actually make the discussion really about the, the kid instead about God's ideal of what's right. And I think some older parents and some grandparents are, are seeing that in younger generations like, whoa, the okay, that's that's not right. That That is not how you raise a kid to fear God and to selflessly love other people. And because every generation has its parenting strengths and weaknesses, this question becomes super personal and rather emotional. Maybe you feel the tension right now. Like, how should I take people's feedback? Here's my quick answer. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, it says, Before a downfall, the heart is haughty or proud, or arrogant. But humility comes before honor. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. The Proverbs say stuff like this all the time, that the smartest people aren't dismissive of other opinions. They don't run away from confrontation. They don't get quickly defensive. No, pride leads to a later fall. But humility comes before honor. So when someone doesn't agree with my parenting or someone doesn't agree with yours, uh, I think it's very, very tempting to be defensive or who are you to tell me or you don't know my kid and what they need. I think the Bible would encourage you to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Maybe you'd say something like, oh, wow. Okay, to be honest, that's that's really hard to hear, but t tell me more. Like, what did you see and and what makes you say that? The person giving the feedback might be totally wrong, but it would be arrogant and unwise of you to dismiss the feedback before you've understood it, considered it, and prayed about it. Maybe one of the best things that you could do, because some people are overly critical, some people don't get the unique dynamics of your child, how they think and what they feel. One of the smartest things you could do that the Proverbs would applaud all day long is to ask some older parents who've been successful in raising their kids. Some like mentor moms or dads that can disciple you. you know, maybe you see their teenage kids or kids in their 20s and the kids like lo love God and they're good humans and they're contributing to society and they have a close relationship. I would ask parents like that, what do you think of my parenting? 
And if these are people that love God and love you, who, who care deeply about raising a kid the right way, the kind of feedback they give you, I, I bet, is going to be filled with wisdom. And if you ask that question to two or three people and you hear some consistent answers, I think that's the kind of feedback that you want to take deeply to heart. Not everything that everyone says about your parenting is right and not everything everyone says is wrong. So the Proverbs encourage us to be humble, to listen even to people we don't agree with, and to search for the wisdom, the, the truth that God is speaking to us through such people. Uh, moms and dads, I just want you to know I'm praying for you today. Um, it is a hard task and it is a marathon road to raise kids. I'm most of the way down that road <laughs> to launching my kids in into adulthood. It has been a trying task, but God's been faithful. He's provided good wisdom, good books, good podcasts, good mentors, good advice, good correction. I pray that you and I have the humility to hear it too, because as the Proverbs say, humility comes before honor.